going to be doing a uh, quad focused leg workout today, um, which is actually going to be back to back leg workouts for you, not for me. I'm not doing two days in a row. That'd be absolutely insane. Although I should because of the amount of time that I've taken off. Last video, I explained what happened with my sunburn. So I had to take literally like almost two weeks off of training legs hard because of how swollen and tight the skin was. And now skin's all healing and gross. It's whatever though. Anyways, you didn't come here to watch that. So we're doing a quad focus leg workout today. We're starting with seated calf raises. I'm doing this just to switch things up, but also to teach you something new. Now, difference between seated and standing, you're gonna be biasing a little bit more of the calf muscles. There's gonna be two main calf muscles. Uh, sorry, there's two main muscles that make up the calf. You've got your gastrocnemius, which is the outside or this kind of bigger portion that you see of your calves. And then you've got the soleus, which is more inner calf, which runs all the way from the ankle and up inside underneath. <clears throat> now, you're still gonna train both regardless of which one you pick, whether that's standing or seated, but doing seated is gonna help bias more of that soleus or that inner calf muscle because it does not cross the knee joint. Now, because the gastrocnemius crosses the knee joint, because I'm in this flexed knee position, I'm actually gonna be shortening the gastrocnemius. So it's not gonna be the primary mover of this movement, whereas the soleus is now gonna be the primary mover. If I do standing, because it crosses that knee joint, my knees are gonna be straight. It's gonna be the, a more lengthened uh, gastrocnemius. So then that's why it becomes more of a, a primary mover in that aspect, even though you're still gonna be training both regardless. But that's a little bit of nuance. <clears throat> We're doing seated today. Um, again, I just want to show you something new. Now, I've already done two working sets. I'm doing four. And you know why I like starting with calves is because one, I get more mobility throughout my workouts, kind of increases the mobility overall in the beginning of my workout, but also because I have more energy in the beginning of my workout. So I'm able to overload that muscle more. If I save it towards the end, I've said this a hundred times, but I tend to get really tired and then I slack on calves or I'm not be able to move as much weight. So that being said, um, and I know weight isn't everything. Um, form is the same thing though across the board. I wanna make sure almost half my foot is on this platform. It's gonna be more surface area to push off of. And I actually wanna be driving through the ball underneath my big toe into this platform. So I'm not pushing up and rounding onto my toes like this. I'm actually keeping my ankles in towards each other the entire time, driving the big ball underneath my uh, big toe, sorry, into that platform and focusing on driving that ankle joint up and forward. And then as I come down to that negative, I'm focused on pulling that ankle joint down and back towards the ground. So we're gonna do third working set here, coming down for that full stretch, keeping those ankles in, remember, and then driving through, pushing that joint, ankle joint up and forward, squeezing as hard as I can, controlling that eccentric, coming all the way down, stretching that calf as far down as I can. I'm actually actively pulling my toes up towards my shin activating this tibia muscle. Um, I'm not just passively letting the weight uh, pull my ankles down. Control. Partial reps is completely fine, as long as it's in the lengthened state. Okay, we got one more working set there. One tip too, I find, is a lot of people when they're doing calves, they tend to go really heavy. Like you don't have to go that heavy. If anything, I want you to start lighter and just focus on that form, focus on that range. I get a lot of questions because I do have pretty decent ankle mobility and mobility in my hips, but I attribute that to working in those deep ranges, removing the ego, stripping down the weight and working at getting better in those deep extreme ranges. The problem is, is people try to go overly heavy and then they say, well, I don't have good mobility, but it's, it's because you're not strong in those flexible ranges. I mean, after all, that's by definition what mobility is. It's being able to move through a wide range of motion with that joint, but be strong through that uh, range of motion more actively as opposed to flexibility is just more passive. Um, how far can you actually move that joint passively? So you want to, Remove the ego when it comes to any of your lifts, primarily for what I'm talking about is calves. 
people throw so many plates on the machines and they just do this kind of like half rep bouncing, staying in that mid range, which I've talked about many times on other movements. We tend to do that because one, we're very weak in the extremes. Two, we're, well, then that goes into the next thing, which is we're really strong through that mid range. So it's comfortable for us. So we can hang out and use a lot of weight in those mid ranges. So instead, reduce the weight, push the ego aside, and focus on coming down, getting a deep, deep stretch, as deep as you possibly can. And as, as long as it's comfortable for you, work in that range. And then again, focus on coming up into a full contraction. And over time, you're gonna train yourself to work through that range. You're gonna be stronger in that range, and then you'll actually become stronger overall. And who knows, maybe you'll actually get to, you know, lifting that weight that you once could when you were just half repping it. So you know, train smart, but the biggest tip, focus on coming all the way down, control that eccentric, control every rep, none of this half repping, none of this bouncing out of the bottom too. A lot of people just kind of like bounce their calves, um, but you know, that's my two cents. So we got one more set here and then we're gonna move on to some leg extensions. Now, foot positioning doesn't matter. You don't have to have your toes pointed in. You don't have to have them out. I mean, you can if you want, it's not gonna really do much. Just do what's comfortable for you, what you can control. Um, but most importantly, again, what's comfortable for you. Don't put yourself in a position that isn't comfortable because you're not gonna actually apply yourself and push yourself in that movement if it's uncomfortable. We're gonna move on to some leg extensions. Okay, the plan for this, we got three working sets. Two, we did this last time, two of which are gonna be straight sets. Just as many as I could do to failure at a challenging weight, aiming for eight, somewhere between eight and 12 reps, okay? The third set, we're gonna turn into mile reps. So we're gonna use probably the same weight. Um, ideally, it's gonna be challenging. And ideally, I wanna be failing or struggling around that eight to 10 rep range. And then for the mile reps, I'll explain it then, but I'll explain it a bit now for those of you that are tuning in that don't know what mile reps are. You're picking a weight that's challenging, aiming for that target rep range of yours, ideally somewhere between eight and 12 reps. And then, you're gonna take 10 second rest once you kind of fail at that range, 10 second rest until the burning goes away. And then you're gonna complete another three to five reps, 10 second rest, three to five reps. You're gonna keep going and so on and so forth until you can't complete three reps um, at all. So it's kind of like a, um, um, my God, uh, <laughs> a rest pause. Uh, yeah, rest pause. I don't, know why. I don't know why I always get confused with that. Pause, rest, rest, pause. It's like a rest, pause set. So, kind of a warm up set here um, because we are just starting with quads. And um, again, it's just a gauge set just to see how the machine feels, making sure everything's set up appropriately. I'm actually going to move this seat, this pad, I think as far back. Yeah. This is going to reduce my hip flexion 
and allow me to still train the same quad muscles. Like ideally when you're doing, and this actually goes into why I'm starting with leg extension. So similar to the calves, I have more energy in the beginning of my workout. I want to prioritize the main muscles that I'm training, which is the rectus femoris. It's the quad muscle that crosses the hip joint. This movement, particularly the leg extension, will bias that muscle more than anything else because you're at this shortened hip or this flexed hip position. So it's shortening that muscle already. Now, I am increasing the back. I still have hip flexion, so I'm still gonna be biasing it a bit or prioritizing it rather, but I'm reducing the hip flexion a little bit. So I'm getting a bit more length within that muscle. So therefore I can actually train it in a bit of a lengthened state. Okay. So this will be working set number one. And this is just a straight set to failure. Somewhere between that eight and 12 rep range. No. So just a regular rest, rest time on these because these are just straight sets. This is not the mile reps. Got one more set like that. Probably give myself two to four minutes just to fully rest while I talk to you. So another thing too is by having that back rest all the way back, is it going to make that much of a difference? Probably not. Um, I mean, I don't know for certain. Um, but it's just changing things up a bit, changing up angles, changing up slight stimulus, I think is important when it comes to resistance training, you know. But again, you can always get away with just doing the same thing over and over again if it works for you, if you like it. So just try things out. Try different variations. Um, so that's why I'm setting that back rest up because I want to, you know, tweak the movement a little bit, see if I get a greater stimulus. And I've done it in the past and I do feel greater stimulus in my quads. So give it a shot. It's not the be all or end all, as I've mentioned many times. We got set number two. We're using these straps. Again, I've mentioned this in the past, but for those of you that might just be watching now, I recommend using these wrist wraps. Now, the reason being is your grip isn't gonna be a limiting factor because the whole goal of this movement, the whole point of this machine rather, is they have these handles here for you to grip and pull against to keep your hips in that seat the entire time. If you don't, and you're just having your hands on your knees, then what happens is as you increase that weight and try to overload, your butt's gonna start to lift up off that seat. You're not gonna be very stable. If you're not keeping your hips stable, you're not gonna be able to generate as much force as possible in your legs. So grip these handles, pull yourself against them, but ideally use these wrist straps. That's gonna allow you to have your grip not become a limiting factor. And you can just tighten these up. And then that way you don't actually have to be pulling nearly as hard, but it's gonna be a lot harder for you to actually come off the seat because your hands are gonna be stuck to these, uh, these um, handles. Okay, set number two. Now, for the form. Again, keeping those hips down, I'm pulling myself in that seat the entire time. Keeping my knees pointed straight towards the wall in front of me the entire time. I'm not moving them out like this and then rotating them in. I'm keeping my knees, if anything, more narrow or in. Basically trying to think that I'm aligning them with my hip joint. And then as I initiate that first rep, I'm thinking about kicking my feet out and away from me, um, not just up, 
rather. So I'm actually trying to create as much contact with my hamstring on the, on the pad that I'm sitting on to initiate that movement. So almost thinking about pulling that knee joint down to initiate that rep. I'm not just thinking about picking the weight up, if that makes sense. Now I don't care where your feet are, your feet, it doesn't matter. By having your feet turned in or outward, it's not gonna make a difference on what quad muscle you're gonna train. You're training them all equally anyways. Just focus on keeping that knee joint straight. Control every rep, control that eccentric. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm going to rest again. We got our third set where we're going to be doing some mile reps for that one. So I'm going to explain again what I want you to focus on for those mile reps. We're probably going to go up and wait just slightly. Ever so slightly. Third and final set, we're gonna be doing the mile reps. So I increased the weight slightly by about 15 pounds or so. And the goal of this is to keep the form perfect or near perfect. A little bit of body English is fine. In other words, like, you know, you can move around. You don't have to be so rigid the whole time. It's gonna be really hard too. Aiming for that eight to 12 rep range, somewhere in there, I wanna fail. 10 second rest or enough seconds until the burning goes away or dissipates in my legs and then i want to perform another three to five reps at the exact same weight rest again until that burning goes away three to five and so on until i can't perform three reps there's no allotted amount of segmented sort of um segment segmented reps i guess you could call it um that you have to do so i don't care about that you're just focused on doing as many three to five segments as possible um, in that sort of condensed or shortened amount of time. And this is a, it's a great way to kind of show yourself or teach yourself how to go to actual failure um, in a movement. Even though I know these are sort of po um, rest pause type of sets, but still, you'll be able to actually feel Failure. Okay. All right, three to five reps. Four. Same thing. Probably got two more on me. Two more segments.
Mm. Oh shit. This is definitely gonna be the last. Oh fuck. That's it. Oh shit. Oh man. You have not ever done that. You're in for a treat when you try it. But you have to push yourself. You have to go as far as you can. You can't just half ass it and just stop a segment short. Really try to get and squeeze as much out of that as possible. Um, yeah. There was one thing I wanted to touch on. Oh, if you noticed in between those segments when I was resting for that 10 or 15 seconds, I was slightly picking up my hips. Um, that's just a little technique that you can use to help drain sort of that burnt, like lactic acid, the burning feeling or sensation in the actual muscle. Um, and it does make a difference by doing that. You are actually kind of stretching out the quads a bit, which will help reduce some of that burning sensation, which will also let you kind of get back to the actual set in that condensed time. So you can give that one a shot. Um, if there's anything else I'm trying to think, damn, there was something I wanted to say. Doesn't matter. Just be sure, you know, to control, 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 control. Don't just swing that weight coming up halfway. Fully extend that knee, straighten out that knee, squeeze that quad. But anyways, we're going to move on to some hack squats now. And uh, yeah, we got about three working sets there. So see you there. Now, as always, we are warm, but we're going to do a gauge set, warm-up set, just to see how we're feeling, make sure the machine is set up, make sure that our setup is good, and then we're just going to get right into the three working sets. So I'm going to warm up with just two plates on, but I'm not going to go to failure on this set. So I'm only going to do about like five or six reps, if that. Okay, it's good. Now, you're probably wondering why I started with leg extensions. Isn't that going to kind of impede on my performance or energy in this movement? And the answer is yes. <laughs> but it's not the end of the world. It's not always about lifting so heavy sometimes it takes that of course progressively overloading through load is extremely important there's many ways you can do that i like starting with leg extensions at least lately i don't do it all the time but like i mentioned i can prioritize that rectus femoris muscle which is that quad muscle that sort of runs through the center my big ass legs you can't even see it kidding we're not big legs but runs through the center here now I can prioritize that muscle more with that movement. So I have more energy in the beginning of my workout, like I mentioned. Okay. Next is yes, I'm going to be sort of, I hate the term, but pre exhausting my quads. So I won't actually be able to lift nearly as much as I can on this if I were to start fresh without lifting or doing, sorry, without doing any sort of leg extension or quad movement. But for me personally, all that load on my traps and my spine, at least lately, these past few months, I mean by lately, I just find I wake up the next day and I just have like tightness in my neck. Now that's something that I probably have to correct on my own terms, but this is some way that at least I can mitigate that. Um, so if you're someone who experiences trap pain, 
the next day or something after doing hack squats or even just barbell squats, you know, try uh, lightening up that load, starting with something else to sort of pre-exhaust that muscle. Then you're not, you're actually gonna be forced not, can't talk, you're actually gonna be forced to not be able to lift as much as you normally could. And therefore you're gonna have less of a overall load or stimulus on your spine and on your back. So look, this isn't the, the, the best way to do things. This isn't the only way to do things. This is just how, again, I like to do things. So whether you think it's right or wrong, this is just kind of what I think about. I'm intentional with my training and my exercise selection, or at least I try to be, you know? And I think that's a message I wanna to give to you guys is, you know, just try to be intentional with your movements. Try to think about the what, the whys, the how for certain exercises um, and when to place them. And I think you're gonna learn a lot about yourself. You're gonna learn a lot about, you know, fitness and bodybuilding and growing. And um, I think that's the most important thing. Don't just be so dogmatic and stuck in your ways all the time just because you heard someone that you idolize say something, you know, try it out, test it out for yourself, see if you like it. If it works, great, stick to it. And then be open-minded to something else too down the road and try that too. And then that way you can really kind of analyze the whole situation and get a full scope of what actually works and what doesn't for you. Because at the end of the day, this is for you. So anyways, I'm, I'm all over the place now. I'm gonna go have your... <laughs> Okay, working set number one. We are going to start with four plates, aiming for six to eight reps. Now, last time I started with three plates, but I wanna see, and I ended, sorry, with four plates, but I wanna see how strong I'm doing. How strong I'm doing. I don't even know if that makes sense at this point, and I'm fucking Charlie horsing myself. We're in it, we're in it today. <laughs> okay. Six to eight. Mm, come on. Come. Come. <laughs> Two more, come on. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna stop it there at seven. Now, the reason I'm stopping it there is because this is the first working set and I don't wanna get, this might sound stupid because I'm intentionally backing off. I wanna go to failure on definitely the last set but maybe even the next set. You don't have to go to failure on every single set. You can 100% stop shy of that one to two rep range. Um, so I'm intentionally pulling back on this first set. Probably could have done definitely two more reps, maybe even three. So I am still in that one to two, one to three rep uh, range of failure, um, probably even two. So intentionally pulling back next set we might even, no, we're gonna stay there. Just focus on the control. Again, like I mentioned in a previous video, it's like training smart, trying not to always ego lift, trying not to let your ego get in the way. A few things you wanna think about. How did that set feel? Did you control the weight? Were you struggling towards the end of those reps? If all those are checked off, then yes, you definitely can, you know, maybe increase that weight. But if there's some ounce of you that's kind of like, well, pushing it, maybe start to feel my heel elevate on those last few reps. Maybe just stay there. The next set, try to get quality reps. Maybe try to push past that uh, initial target rep range that you first set on that, that you first set out for yourself on that first actual working set. There's plenty of, I just spat on you guys, sorry. There's plenty of ways that you can um, progressively overload. It doesn't always have to be just push as much weight as possible. Go, go, go. You know, so sometimes it's good to pull back. 
You don't have to go to failure on every single set. But I do think you should go to failure. I, I'm a firm believer on pushing yourself to failure as much as possible on all different exercises because that's going to allow you to actually understand, have a greater awareness and knowledge about how it feels and what it looks like for you to go to actual failure on those specific movements. And then with that, then you can pull back and be like, all right, now I can hang around that one to two rep, rep in reserve or RAR is what people like to say. Um, then you have a, a greater understanding of what that would look like. So that's it. Um, that's my spiel. Next set, I'll go in like a, another minute or so, give myself a bit of a rest. Second set. <clears throat> Come on. Hmm. Come on. I think that was nine. Do we go heavier on that? I think so. I think we'll throw 25s on. Now, before doing leg extensions, I can do definitely five plates. I think I've even done six for like, not to get too over that list here, but maybe five reps at six plates. But because we started with the leg extensions, my quads are gassed. So we're going to do a quarter on each side, which is still a big jump. It's 50 pounds. So might not be big for some people. So I'm looking at Good six to eight reps here again. But going right to failure on these. Pretty much. Maybe one rep shy, just enough to lock this machine. But if I stop halfway and I go back to the bottom, that's completely fine. It's the last set. We're not going to be doing a drop set. Because after this, we got two more exercises. I'll explain after though. All right, guys, we got our final set here. Now, for the form, what I want you thinking about is control the centric. I actually had someone write on a previous leg workout why I went down a little quicker on the heavier weight, didn't pause at the bottom, but then when I stripped it and did lighter weight, I came down slower and paused at the bottom. So in other words, he was kind of calling out my reps. Um, not in a negative way, he was just addressing it because he was probably curious, or she, I, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. They were um, addressing it, whether they were curious about it or being inquisitive. The point is, it made me reflect and think, shit, I actually probably should have tried my best to slow down. Even though in my mind, I was like, well, the weight's really fucking heavy. Um, but I, at least I'm standardizing the reps for that one set at that weight but I'm not standardizing it across the board, meaning my reps when it's light are perfect or near perfect. Why not try to match that with heavier weight? After all, that's kind of what I teach. So again, it, I'm always learning and I'm always trying to catch myself as well. So I appreciate you addressing that because my goal for this is to now slow it down, try to pause at the bottom and come up. Obviously, once it gets heavy, it's really hard and I'm not gonna pause for a long time. Like I'm not doing pause, pause reps here where I'm going down, pausing exploding up that's not it at all if anything i don't want to do that because that actually will impede on the actual muscle growth part because i'm not going to be able to generate as much force at an efficient at a, an efficient level if i just rest in the bottom and then come up it's just going to tire me out even more when i could just get a little higher number of reps um with a shorter amount of rest if that makes sense 
But again, I wanna to try to control as much as possible. So I want you to think about placing your feet lower on this platform as low as possible without your heels elevating. That's gonna allow you to target your quads more because the whole goal of this movement is to target the quads. We're maintaining this upright position through the whole movement the entire time. That's gonna minimize hip flexion, but we wanna increase as much knee flexion. So we want our feet lower on that platform to allow our knees to track over top of our toes without our heels elevating. So think about driving that middle part of your foot right around here, the arch, flattening that, almost pronating your feet inward even. They don't have to be on the edges, bring them in, try to flatten that foot, create as much surface area to push off of. You're gonna feel it more than if you were to be on the outsides of your feet, lacking a bit of stability, maybe coming out onto your toes um, or having your feet too high up. So all these things count. I want you to think about that. And then lastly, I want you to focus on pushing knees forward over top of those toes on the negative. And then as you drive up in the movement, you're actually thinking about pulling your knees back, doing almost like a leg extension, trying to slide this foot up the platform, squeezing those quads. Last set. Come on. Come on. One more. Two more. Oh, shit. Last one. Hold on. Oh, fuck. That was ugly rep. Shit. That was an ugly rep. No, one more. Last rep. Make it good. Okay. That's it. We're moving on. We're going to do some Bulgarian split squats. Just two sets on each leg. Probably use the Smith machine if it's open. And then finish off with one hamstring movement, which is going to be an RDL. So, see you there. Okay, first warm up, sorry. First working set here. We're doing Bulgarian split squats on the Smith machine. I'm using the Smith machine instead of free weights because I have more stability in the movement because this is on a fixed path. I don't have to worry about balance as much. Um, I know that's a very big limiting factor when it comes to dumbbell Bulgarian, Bulgarian split squats. Um, a lot of people say, well, I just can't do them because I find myself focusing more on not falling over than actually lifting or performing the actual movement properly. So I highly recommend doing a Smith machine Bulgarian split squat, or if you do free weight, you could do it near a rack or near something that you can hold. You can even set up, and I'll show you this in another video, but now that we're on that topic, you can even set up one of these bars, you know, like say you're just doing it near the dumbbell rack. You can set up one of these bars, have your opposing hand hold the load in the other hand, and now you can actually, you know, balance better and use this for more stability. But that being said, we're not doing free weight, obviously. So first working set here, I did one warm up with no weights. Again, as a gauge set, just to set everything up, did a few reps on each leg, but we're aiming for about, again, eight to 12 reps slow and controlled, focusing on coming down into a deep stretch. And again, quad biasing this movement. So I wanna make sure that I'm upright the entire time and I'm pushing that knee forward. So I'm not just coming straight down like this. I wanna actually come down with that knee coming forward and then come up pulling that knee back. Ugh. 
对。哎。Oh shit! Come on, we're hitting that wall. I'm gonna still go though. Oh, come on. <sighs> oh, fuck. Okay. Now, as always with isolateral movements, we're going to give ourselves a good amount of rest in between each set. That's why I'm only doing two because it's going to take a long time. We're just going to do this like rest a minute or two, get our breath back, have our heart rate come down, get that energy to apply the same amount of focus and performance and tension on the other leg, on my right leg. So. All right. Right leg this time. Again, I only took like a minute and a half rest. Oh, shit. Come on. Come on. And that next, on that last set, I'm going to start with my right. My right is always so much weaker for whatever reason. Maybe my hips off or whatever, but I'm gonna start with it. So, some of you might be like, hey, online, I've seen people switch from Bulgarian split squats and do single leg leg press instead because it's the same movement. It's not. It's a great alternative to 100%. It's still very effective in training your quads or your glutes, whatever you're trying to focus on, because you're gonna be way more stable too, seated in the leg press machine, but they're vastly different movements. The reason this movement's so special is because it's not because you're doing a single leg squat. It's because of what that opposing leg is doing, because it's kicked back behind you and elevated on a bench you're getting a crazy stretch and it's still under a lot of tension to the duration of the movement. So that's why the Bulgarian split squat in itself is very effective because it's not just effective for that working leg that's in front, it's equally effective in its own right for the leg, the opposing leg that you're using for stability that's elevated on the bench behind you because it's in that stretched position. You're still loading that quad. So don't get them confused. Two different exercises, both of which are extremely, extremely effective. But again, you're comparing apples to oranges. Yes, they're very similar. Yes, in exercise selection, you could get away with doing one over the other, but I think it's still very valid to do both in their own right. And if you're worried about stability, just do Smith machine, like I said, you don't have to do dumbbell. Okay, we got one more set. Last one. We're not increasing the weight. As you see, this is the end of the workout for quads and pretty much the end of the workout in general because I've only got one more exercise after this. So I'm pretty much gassed. I'm dying around eight reps. I'm not going all the way to absolute failure, but again, I'm going to that one to two reps shy. Basically when my hips start to drift back and I start to recruit more glute to get this weight up, I'm kind of calling it because at that point, I'm not really placing as much tension on that target muscle. Oh, and sorry, we're starting with the right this time. Mm. 
Remember, knee comes forward, pulling knee back. Ooh. Oh shit, come on. Ugh. Okay. Quick rest. Yeah. One thing I forgot to touch on is I'm elevating my heel using this wedge. You can use like five pound, 10 pound plates, it's completely fine. But if you want to bias and target your quads a little bit more, elevate that heel. I mentioned this in the past, but you're artificially increasing the length of your tibia. Meaning in short, you're going to be able to hold a more upright posture the entire time, reduce hip flexion. So you're not going to be leaning forward. And then you're able to drive that knee further over your toe than you normally would if your foot was flat. Some people might not have that ankle mobility. So this is a great way to mitigate that lack of ankle mobility. Oh, shit. Okay. Sit. Oh. Okay. We're finishing off with some Romanian deadlifts. I think we're going to do on the Smith machine just because we're here. We're going to quickly set it up. And I'm going to use bumper plates because they're flatter and thick. I can actually elevate myself off the ground. Sometimes this machine bottoms out. Smith machines will bottom out if you try to come down deep enough. So doing more of, I guess you could call a deficit RDL, but in reality, this just bottoms out too early. All right. So two working sets here. We're going to go relatively heavy-ish, not crazy. But the idea is I want to aim for that 10, 8 to 10 rep range. And if we have to go heavier on that final set, which I doubt it because I'm getting pretty tired, then we will. Oh, and then this, you definitely want to be using these at this point because the whole focus is going to be trying to mitigate any sort of limiting factor that would be your grip because we want to cut, try to focus and isolate all that tension and resistance on our hamstrings and glutes. I don't want to be worried about shrugging and using my grip to hold this weight. I'm actually going to bring it a bit higher to start. That's just going to allow me to better set up this movement.
Okay. I'm gonna stay there. That was good. We're not going to failure, failure. Hovering around that one to two reps shy. Oh man, I'm tired. But you're gonna feel this a lot in your lower back too, which is fine. Even when it comes to exercise selection, maybe something like this, you could be better off doing earlier on in your workout. Especially if you find yourself having to go heavier. Um, then I suggest maybe selecting this movement earlier on. But today, I'm just doing it at the end. I know I didn't do hamstrings today other than this. But I like saving stretching-based movements towards the end of my workouts. Hence why... When you see me do triceps, I pretty much, for the most part, will always do something with a shoulder flexion or elevated elbow overhead for triceps, just so I can fully stretch out the triceps towards the end of the movement, or sorry, the end of the uh, workout. My form for this, I wanna make sure that this bar is close to my shins the entire time. So I'm placing my feet, pretty much trying to have my ankles aligned with this actual bar path. Then with my feet, like I've mentioned before, I'm applying all that pressure through the middle of my foot. So I'm actually slightly pronating my feet inward like this, not like too much, like crazy, but just slightly to create contact with the middle of my foot, splaying my toes, keeping full contact. And then as I set up, keeping that chest up the entire time, and I'm not thinking about just bending down and rounding my back. I'm thinking about hinging at the hip, pushing my hips as far back behind me as possible. And that's what's initiating the lowering or the negative of this movement. I'm not bending, I'm hinging my hips as far back, pushing them up and back towards the wall, creating as much stress that stretch, sorry, tension in my hamstrings and glutes. One little tip, if you want to target a bit more glute, like I explained on the good mornings, you're just going to keep your knees more bent and then push your hips even far back, further back. That's going to reduce tension in your hamstrings and place it more on your glutes. If you want equal tension on your glute and hamstring, slight bend like I'm doing, or if you want obviously more tension on your hamstrings, less on your glute, then almost lock your knees at that point and just focus on a more shallower range. But I wouldn't, I would err on the side of caution for that. Go lighter if you're gonna do that. Yeah, go for it. All right, we got our last set. Pressure in the middle of my foot, keeping that chest up, neutral spine, and then initiating that first rep and every rep with hinging at the hip, pushing those hips back behind me. Okay. Oh, shit. All right, guys. That's it for today's quad focused leg workout. Hopefully, you guys learned something. Started with seated calf raises. I explained to you why there are the differences between seated and standing. Did the leg extensions. Again, prioritizing that rectus femoris first, pre exhausting the quads to get into hack squat. Did the hack squat to failure and then finished off two sets, Bulgarian split squat quad focus on the Smith, and then finished the whole workout overall with the Smith machine, Romanian deadlifts. So again, as always, hopefully you guys learned something, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. And as always, continue to work hard, 
be diligent, be kind, and, um, you know, be open-minded. Try new things. Don't stay in your ways. Unless it works for you, that's great. But always be open-minded to try new things. But more importantly, take it easy, and I'll see you on the next video.